hello, hello. <clears throat> how, oh, excuse me, how are we doing? Everything seems to be working. More or less. What's up, Kartza? How's it going? Hey, I never claimed to be a pro streamer. Don't put words in my mouth. Uh, all right, so we're casting my games now. So let's go for it. Uh, let's start with four games I played yesterday. Yeah, you damn gas later. Uh, I played four games yesterday. Let's let's look at those. I played them off stream. So, Andrew. Hey, Nick. Okay. So we'll watch these four, and then I think we'll we'll watch a, a map gen team game. That I played a little while ago. How many days ago was it now? Close to a week anyway. Let's get rid of the blue. Get the music on. <clears throat> Alright. So map gen. On ladder. 10 by 10. Civ base is in the middle. So you've got like two flex. Two PDs, and then what? We've got some PGens, energy storage, another anti-air or two uh, radar. Civ buildings. This space is exactly the same, except rotated 180 degrees. So you know you got to figure this out on the fly. We're against Esperanto. Is there one second there? Yeah, so we're against Esperanto. Esperanto, I said. Yeah, so at this point I was minus two. The, finally, the, the leagues got uh, put up. And um, so Esperanto. So finally, finally the leagues got put up. Okay, Esperanto made P, P gens, which seems seems bad. Is he gonna stall mass? Celine is good. Um, but yeah, Esperanto says he's going to twenty three seventy. He's pretty far away from that, like you know, two hundred points away. So. You know, good luck to him, like, really. This is so much power right now. And no mass, so it looks like... Yeah, he didn't just go for the Hydro, he built P-Gens before the Hydro. I did not. I did actually walk around with my commander here, but you can see what we're doing. So we send one engineer. This engineer is going to go here, and then we lost the scout in the middle. We're going to go expand here and expand here. And we kind of forget about this mix at the back for a while. Because there's not, nothing really to do back here except maybe go here and then get some reclaim or something. There are a few trees. I don't think either of us really used the trees. And now Esperanto. Esperanto made six P gens and a hydrocarbon before he made a, an air factory. So. I don't know. Not a good build from Esperanto, basically. You can see we have air factory. We're not overflowing stuff at the moment. It's up FTX. You're also going to 2370, okay. In in what time frame and in what context? It's up Storm Lantern. So Esperanto's gonna catch up on factories and stuff now, but yeah, he just he just built way too much 
power. And um, he's expanding to this place with his ACU. We still haven't left the base. He's got a bomber out now. And this bomber will be spotted by our nice mole. And we have an inti. We already put the inti over to this side, the first inti. So it's actually in position here, and I think we'll get the kill. And the bomber won't be able to do anything. So overall, our opening has just been just been good. Twenty three seventy by twenty three seventy is my slogan. Well, that, real catchy, really really catchy stuff there. Me too. Aiming for 2370 in a parallel universe. <laughs> yeah, so at this point, it's all, I mean, it's relatively similar, but with the stalling and the loss of the bomber, I should have a bit of a lead. I have more power at this point. And we have a good balance. Um, okay, we bombed this. We think it might be an engineer. But it wasn't, and now we don't have a scout. Our scout is kind of out of position to kill this engineer. I don't know if we get him or not. If we micro, we could. And we actually just forget about the bomber, so that's quite bad. The bomber goes down. We try and avoid the ACU, but we've already given it one kill. We managed to dodge the, the ACU for now. And I think we also seem to lose air here. And we're losing some units to the flak. This this anti-air is so annoying in the uh, so annoying in the middle. It really blocks up the middle of the map. These two bases. But, you know we're being annoying. Kill the Zui there, which is nice. And we get caught out. So we're going to work on this base. We're like attacking it, trying to kill some stuff to eventually get the reclaim. Our ACUs are in the same position. I don't know if Esperanto knows where my ACU is. Probably he doesn't. I'm not sure though, actually, to be honest. And we're and he actually has no no units on defending this side at all, so he loses his engineer here. Which is really good for us. And we're gonna do some damage on the top side because there's nothing defending. What's up, Michael? Might be the weekend for your yearly subcom ladder game. Sounds good. So, very equal on. So, at this point, I feel really good about the game because we've killed this expansion. As you can see, we killed this and we're. I mean, we're going to rebuild this shortly. But, uh, yeah, already we're in a good position, basically. I mean, we even have this these mechs is here so at this point we're we're kind of ahead on on map control for sure we have a PD in this space we have a PD in this space as well which might be unnecessary but it's not too bad what's up Ryan want to treat 248 yeah now you can go sleep at a, a slightly more reasonable time nice unfinished factory here I think that an engineer got pulled off this to go build the mechs at the front Okay, a bit of micro back and forth. Now we do, this is some, this is a really nice position. I'm like, okay, well, he's come a bit too far away from his own units, so we can get some damage in. You can see he's dropped a lot lower in HP than I have, but he has gotten more kills. And then once his units arrive, we just retreat away a bit. No, it won't be going for four hours. I definitely won't. Not today, and we've got a sneaky mantis at the back. So we're doing nice raiding at the time, so... Basically, if we're doing some raiding, we have outside mexes, and this base is dead. I mean, there's no way we should be losing, unless we walk into his ACU and his units without our own units in support. So here we lose a bit of HP unnecessarily, and uh, we, we our units aren't too far away. I mean, if they were back here, we might die, but we're in this position... Bombers come in. 1-1? One, one. What do you mean, SP? 
A lot of nice, nice air scouts over here. He hasn't actually scouted my base, but he has scouts in my base, which is very interesting. Now the bombers come in and start doing damage. Esperanto with loads of assistance on the air factory at this point. So really using a lot of resources into air and we're dropping very low on HP now. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly the same thing. You're right. Um, and Esperanto could have taken a draw there. He could have taken a draw there, but he got greedy, to be honest, and wanted the win. Which, yeah, he. Re I, I mean, he definitely could have taken the draw there. The flak carried me. Apparently, I do have an anti-air. I mean, the flak doesn't have that many kills. It has six kills, both of them. The other anti-air is dead. This one, oh, this one has some damage as well, but. Okay, we managed to get PD up here, but everything will get bombed. This expansion will die once again, and uh, we're we're alive. And as soon as I fall back to here, I start making T two on the ACU. You says this is usually what happens. This is usually how you. It's very normal to go and make an AC upgrade. When something like that happens, like um, yeah, he would lose potentially a point or two or something like that if he drew. But um, yeah, usually this is the kind of scenario where there's been a big fight. That's usually when you find the time to to um, to make an upgrade. So we retreat, and as soon as we get back to here, we make. Uh, we start making T2. We go for T2 because it's cheaper. And because we'll get HP and we'll get regen back. So that's what we need because we're low HP. And also if we just make a T2PD that will secure this whole area. And maybe we can, you know, T2 will just be very useful for us. I mean, the gun is obviously good, but we really want some HP. And we want to be able to defend ourselves. And we're in a good position. So we can probably afford to make some T2PDs. There's a lot of mass in this map. We also make a T2 Max. And now Esperanto's made loads of bombers. He has like 15 bombers here, 14 bombers. He's sending scouts into the into the flak. Now the flak really starts farming kills. And here we go, the finale. Here come all the bombers. We're really close to upgrading, to completing our upgrade. We're not stalling, so this is as fast as it'll go. And I really considered cancelling, and then I thought, no way am I cancelling this. I'm going to get health back as soon as I upgrade. So you can see now I'm almost at 5k. It's only T1 bombers. I have anti-air. I have anti-air here. There's flak here. And we just dodge a lot of the bombs. And... We have plenty of units in front of us. We also have air units. And we just make a T2PD here. And that should hold him off. And then we can make a next their next PD much further forward. If necessary, but again. The uh This base has been dead for most of the game, I mean. And uh yeah, we're in a one position, so that's nice random control K is there. We're also going T2 air. Which, I don't know if that was really a great decision, but we had a lot of energy, so we thought, why not make some T2. How many kills? Uh, 8 kills on this one, 7 kills on this, 25 kills! Oh, oh, the, the flak didn't even get most of the kills. I think this is scouts. I think this is from scouts. 25 kills, 1100 mass killed. <laughs> yeah, the bomber snipe wasn't 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 the play. I mean I lost I lost some units into the anti air and PDs as well, but I don't like the those mid bases really. They were a bit much on this. I also don't understand why this is the setup for a, a SID base. It's very extreme really having two static flags. 
What's up, Requiem? Okay, next game. This is uh, Strife of Titan. Twenty by twenty, well, fifteen by fifteen, land map. You can see all this black space here, or can you? No, you can't. Now you can. What's up, space monkey? Uh, yeah. So here you can see all this black space. Is uh, it would be twenty twenty, except for all this blank space. So it's actually really fifteen by fifteen. Hang on, I'm gonna close the window. <laughs> Okay. So, so Pirellis, it's going well. So Saf. Okay. So yeah, it's like fifteen by fifteen, maybe, maybe even less, maybe like thirteen by thirteen. Not sure exactly. So, SP is Seraphim. We are UEF. Please tell us noobs how to play this map. Well, I told I did a replay review on this map a little while ago for Sheep Thief. So that should have some good info in it. You spam units, indeed. So, Esperanto, he's made, you know, three NGs, he's made a Celine now, more NGs coming. <sighs> Fly on my, on my screen. Uh, okay, so we're going second air. Esperanto is probably also going second air. Very normal to go second air on this map. Because obviously it's so huge and you want to make a transport soon. So, let's see what happens. We've made some labs. This is, uh, I mean, if you're UEF versus, if you're really any faction against Seraphim, then I suggest you make labs because your labs will beat Selene's. I mean, if the Selene's micro perfectly, then sure, maybe you can, maybe you can kill a lab. I mean, it's possible. But it's not likely. So make labs against Seraphim. Make labs when you're not against Seraphim as well. It's fine. But especially against Seraphim. You should make them so we have scouts with our labs. Because again, an air scout is not really going to be in time. You can see the labs are here with the scouts before the air scout arrives. So we find a kill here. And we'll find a kill here. So this is already extremely good damage this tank is late and uh, what's up Suki is it um, another Jag school eh, I don't know I mean not really not really okay so now we we're spotting stuff that's in the way so we want to try and you know we're just micring around try to keep the labs alive we also have a couple of more labs so one going up here one going over to the corner and we're just going to try and keep the labs alive as long as possible because that's just going to be annoying for Esperanto to deal with. The longer they're alive, the better for us. We make a bomber now. You want to really try and... Well, what I'm trying to do in this time is basically be very aggressive and annoying and because that, that was kind of been a problem for me is I've been playing too passively. We get lucky there and kill the engineer with basically the last shot from the lab and now we have a bomber heading in this direction and we actually fly over we're we're probably dodging the Celine here and then we give an order to just attack the 
NG and we're going to fly over the Selene, which is quite sad. And uh, yeah, the base is looking very limited, to be honest, at this point. It's quite tricky to get the, ma the mexes quickly. Esperanto has had a better opening. I mean, he is stalling at mass, so he might have... That's a bit of a stall, but really he's he's done better in the opening. Even though we've done damage, he he's you know he's gotten more factories going. He's gotten more mass, and we're gonna build some factories out on the map. And our transport is leaving and looking for places to drop. So we'll drop over here. We only drop one, we have tanks right next to us to, to protect against enemy tanks, but the enemy tanks, are, there's literally nothing on my side of the, of the map. Esperanto has some engines and tanks here, and we're looking for kills with our, with our lab. He drops a tank off to kill the lab, which is beautiful. Really nice move. So we will kill one engine, and then we'll lose... Our lab and he has another NG in the area <clears throat> which we don't spot both ACUs go to middle this is the normal place for an ACU to go I mean you could I think you could walk to here perhaps and close off this area maybe but middle is the normal place to go don't know why this engineer didn't build that max probably because we didn't give it an order would I do a roast as I do to others sometimes well, you probably, probably soon, so we get a PD up here because we know that there's tanks coming. The tanks just leave instead. They don't come in because, well, they would have died to to the PD. And now we actually have a bit more mass. We have more reclaim than Esperanto. And transport heads back to base and immediately picks up more units and begins to go. And Esperanto says he's blind. I guess he didn't know that I was here. That's what he means. But either way, he, w he would have actually lost those units if he sent them in. Because our PD was up in time. So we have more reclaim, which is nice. That's really where our advantage comes from right now, I'd say. Plus doing some damage. We killed the transport, I believe. Did we? Or did we? Well, we defended this NG for now. There's more tanks coming. Did we kill the transport? I don't see it. I don't know if that's the same one. Probably isn't. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the units because Andrew says he has way more units. I have 15 units at the moment, which is obviously not too many. And he has more than double my units. He definitely does have way more units. And that's not really going to change, to be honest. We, we have more mass, but he has more, more units. If we look at how many factories, I have nine. It's not great. And we have a big power stall. He has, he only has eight, so actually in terms of, we're way behind on units, but in terms of, say, our base is, is pretty good. Uh, yeah, this is, this is bad. This is very nasty damage that we're taking. This is the pain of having one, dropping one engineer here is probably a mistake. Probably needed two in that position at least. We're going to get the Hydro. Hydros are really nice in this map. You really need them. And we try to drop f more f forward with the transport. Again, transport's going to go back and it needs to stay active. We grab some units and drop them forward. And yeah, we don't actually have all these factories. So what do we have? We actually have... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight that are actually completed, and eleven total uh, that are building or built. So I'm I'm ahead of mass now. I have some units in middle. I have control of the middle of the map, and really what we need to do is continue taking all the mexes. The thing is. You, you can't avoid damage. Now, so now we're trying to be aggressive here, but we actually get hit by a Zooey, which damages all of these tanks, sadly, as soon as they land. We get a PD up here, deny this, which is nice. There's a lot of production for Esperanto here. 
and he's really taken most of his side of the map and he's done you know done some damage this terrain is saving me here tanks just shooting into the ground for a long time this tank is getting free damage <laughs> so yeah we have a bit of a mess in this corner that we need to deal with Esperanto's given me mid which is nice of him to do but he has no units in middle so he kind of had to do that and now we're going to try to do some raiding of our own we missed a mechs there but we'll go back and get that and we start to split up our tanks you can see we're one to this area one over here one over here keep the rest of them together so that they're harder to deal with bomber gets rid of this pd and our, <laughs> our factory is 99.9% .9 completed but is denied at this point we have 53 tanks and he has 59 and he has got his Celine's oh Esperanto Esperanto <laughs> no he's wasting mass Space, mo sp uh, space Monkey uh, hunting transports looks important it is it is for sure if you can kill some transports you're gonna do well so he has basically we have better reclaim and we have more total mass and um, we have more we have a better economy our macro is better but his he had earlier tank production and he had um, he's getting better fights probably because he has better because um, he had more more units in the opening of the game so you can get better fights because you have more units so that's how you get better fights so we're still we're still now we're finally cleaning up some messes in the corner thanks to the bombers and we're gonna have to drop here once again another transport comes out and again you have to be using transports all the time but now we're gonna have another mess on the right hand side but as you can see this is what one of the things I said in the in the replay review have factories in different places on the map okay so we have factories here 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 in the main base we're gonna make factories here we have factories here we have factories here and in the middle so they're very spread out and this is great for unit production would you say this is a good map for a com drop no definitely not a good map for a com drop bombers are exceptional here especially UEF because they have so much damage the bombers have really saved us you can't really like we don't even have many inties you know we have less than him and he's gonna go win air but it doesn't matter because our bombers are gonna kill these units before he can kill our bombers our bombers cleaned up this mess and he couldn't do anything about it you can't defend all the bombers that are killing your units as they're raiding so just invest in bombers and you're gonna do some they're gonna be they're more than likely gonna be worth it let's see if Esperanto's still wasting mass I don't assume he is he isn't he has t2 mechs and he's making t2 air and again doing more transporting but we're now 4k mass ahead this position comes under attack that was that's that energy storage was supposed to be a PD which is sad that we didn't make a PD there uh, thankfully we have UEF health on our factories and we have four factories producing units so he does have a lot of units here so we need to get the bombers involved and the reinforcements now we make engineers out of these factories to get the reclaim and, and rebuild all the mexes and it's really a battle of well this is a nice advantage but it's really a battle of raiding all this damage over here a lot of it was done by bombers some by units and the battle is to raid and also re you know take back the mexes that get raided as soon as possible bombers raiding here and here and Esperanto doing damage in single positions but if he doesn't kill all the factories if he doesn't hold this position for a while then we'll get the reclaim and it'll be it'll be good for us at this point Esperanto is making T2 air he's not assisting it though and he has a T2 max we also have a T2 max I think and you can see we're doing we're doing pretty well we have some anti-air and we have what 65 tanks that's not a huge amount 
We're not making any tech two or anything. We have very similar unit 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 counts. But look at all the rating. These bombers actually did insane damage. And more raids. So now the raids are starting to go our way. And also we have we have more inties now. Which is critical because he's actually going T2 air and trying to make T2P gen and win air control, do damage with gunships, which I mean gunships are very, very good on this map. So that makes sense, but we're just spamming a lot of bombers. Let's see what's queued up here. 15 bombers with lots of assistance. And now now that we got all of our mass extractors back and we... Except for these three. Then suddenly you come into a lot of mass and it's time to start spending it. So at this point we're in a good position. We won air. We're raiding the shit out of him, especially on the right hand side. And we got most of our stuff back. So we killed this transport. And we queue up just more more land factories. Where wherever we have build power, just throw up some more factories because we have you know, two K mass in the bank. A lot of retracted messages there. And we add some more power. And we start T uh, two land. T two land is quite good here. I mean, T2Air is great too, but T2Air, T2 land is a bit more affordable power-wise, and that's where we're kind of limited. He now has T2 P gen, so he should be able to, to win air soon, but he does walk into our AC in the middle at this moment, and he seems to have no intel. One T1 radar on the map. He's making a lot of T1 bombers. He doesn't have many inties, and he doesn't... Most of his units are, are over here on the left-hand side. So Esperanto has really no... Pro he has production in his main base. He's actually making T2 land. He has production in his main base, but most of his production is on the sides. And he doesn't have good intel. So now he walks into us. So we walk into him. And we bring units. And I think our intel is a lot better than his. And we send all the bombers. We have 71 bombers. These UEF bombers do a lot of damage if they're not dodged like 300 plus damage and we're just gonna walk into him you have to take these chances when they arise and now we have loads of HP Esperanto has no units in support anymore and he will die and we can defend our bombers with with our air I don't know what that is supposed to be and that's GG <laughs> One thing I've, I, I see patterns in my gameplay and probably the number one pattern I see is winning while, when I've had a severe lack of units at some point in the game. Don't know what that means exactly, but I don't know if it's a good thing to be honest. So, oh yeah, also when we went after the ACU, we stopped um, T2 land. We got the engineers making T2 land to build an uh, air factory and assist it and make bombers and just go, go all in for the, the snipe with bombers. And all of our units basically to the center and maybe some here towards the expansion as well. So that was a pretty interesting game. Got a ping. Ah, never mind. up Maximilian I'm just superstitious well you know humans in general are superstitious and it's all like I mean no it is definitely a pattern it is very often when I win I actually have some period where I'm really uh, low on units compared to my opponent and then my opponent doesn't make it work for them okay so game number three that we played yesterday last night what's up Swackle? you can't gaslight me means I had an eco mm, it doesn't always sometimes it does I mean often 
I mean, it should. But, uh... Storm Lantern is correct. My BOs are usually worse than my opponent. That is my biggest problem, honestly. Is having a weaker opening. <laughs> yeah, FTX. So. This map. This map, don't know how I feel about this map still. Probably negatively because I lose on it. Generally. Do I notice myself usually making fury units to their opponent regardless of win or lose? That might be true. But I've definitely noticed it in many, many wins where I just could be rolled over. And I don't get rolled over. I mean, sometimes it's like I have less units, but I, I'm not in danger from it. Sometimes it's like, wow, my my opponent really could have just rolled me. But, um, change up to reclaim. Yeah, the I just don't know how to feel about this whole area of the map. There's so many resources over here. And it's so far away. It, like, it's actually, that's... That's where I have concerns on this map. So, anyway, the opening here, we go second air. SP will also go second air. Let's, let's see his opening. He takes this mechs quite early. This reclaim is obviously... I mean, it's very simple that this engineer goes, takes this reclaim. This is basically... This patch is also here. And then you go down here and you take... Like all of this reclaim. So this engineer is vulnerable, but we're Seraphim, so we don't have labs. Kinda hate not having labs sometimes. Oh, so we're just getting our next factory up. We're gonna go take this this mass. We have a, a tank defending us from labs. Esperanto doesn't seem to make labs very often. For whatever reason. He uses this factory assist thing. Fair enough. And he's going to spam to the right hand side. He sees our scout. We're actually fast. We're there. And he's going to make inties and scouts. We have a bomber now. And it's going way, way around, which maybe is not great. We're trying to get Selene's into good positions. This is a good spot for a Selene. Now we're stalling. Mass, we, we're, we're, I don't think we really are getting, I think our opening is weak in terms of getting reclaim. For Well, we're late on this mechs, very late on this mechs. This reclaim, I kind of forgot about. Um... Yeah, I don't know if our bomber will... Where is the bomber gone, actually? Oh, it's over here now, okay. So the bomber is looking for... I mean, this this is quite bad use of a bomber. We lose a scout in the main base, and... Oh, we do actually target this guy. I wonder if we kill him. I'm not sure. What happens here? Oh, yeah, I know what happens here, actually. As you can see on the scoreboard, though, we are, we are already behind. So we do kill this NG, which is nice. This, I was really strange that this tank just stayed here forever. Now we bomb the mechs because we're not microing, and then we start microing again, I think, at some point. Maybe. Oh, yeah, we do. So we turn around and we bomb some reclaim with just before we die. <laughs> so that's nice. Don't know how much damage that did. 75 mass, 100 mass. But yeah, our opening already, we're, we're behind. I think, let's see. 1300 reclaim. He's going to grab this reclaim now. He has 20 tanks and we have 16 tanks. Bit of a raid over here. Don't know if we kill the NG. We don't. And we have, well, we're actually very equal on, on reclaim. So, he built a factory here, and he's going to spam engineers out of it and start taking this reclaim field. Which is very spread out, but it's certainly nice reclaim. He 
you do have to really find all the reclaim spots. I know Suki said that, you know, there's less reclaim patches, but there's still loads of them. I mean, you really have, like, you have to find this stuff here. That's a PD. That's 120 mass. You have this over here. That's a blaze. I mean, there's, 100, there's 200 mass here plus. So... Obviously, there's mid mass. There's these rocks on this. Like, uh, I don't really. I don't know. Just don't see the need for it, to be honest. But yeah, at this point, we're behind Esperanto with faster. Must be faster. Well, he faster expansion and also slightly more reclaim at this point. Twenty nine hundred to twenty two hundred. So we clean up this raid quite nicely. He doesn't get past, which would have been annoying. You can see Reclaim still here. And we go for an air fight, which I don't think we succeed in winning. And, uh, well, it's kind of a draw. Oh no, okay, we kind, we kind of won, but very slim margins. And he's got a transport. And he's going to middle. We're taking some reclaim. We got the couple of mechs. We got a mechs here as well. We got some radar. And we're trying to get all the mass and just we're just going to keep spamming T1. We're making a transport now. Oh yeah, there's also this which I forgot about. The sides I did not take or think about. And we try and we're well, let's see how far behind the units we are. We're overflowing a lot of power here, so the power overflow is, is hurting big time. 47 tanks to 51, so it's actually quite even, but our tanks are in a bad position. I mean, all our tanks are on the same side. These are good tanks here, but we tried to cut out this army with our AC. We got a few kills, but still a large army got passed, which is very annoying. Very unfortunate for us. We do get some good kills here. And uh, transport moves out, and we're going to be aggressive and try and take this position, which is maybe ill-advised. I think this transport, in retrospect, should have gone to here because there's loads of reclaim here. I've kind of this kind of went out of my mind, to be honest. So I should have dropped here, and then maybe dropped the back here because again there's loads of reclaim, and then tried to take this. And now we see Esperanto drops here, takes a lot of reclaim. And I think that's going to be a big factor at this point, point. We could have had the same thing. We could have taken that reclaim with our transport here, but instead we went for something that was, I don't know, too ambitious really. I mean, we do have units in support. He has a bomber here looking for engineers that are going to drop here. And Esperanto is going to steal that now. And uh, yeah, we've lost our NG here. We do have more NGs, but this expansion is completely untaken. And Esperanto is going to leap ahead in reclaim. 2.3k ahead now. Thanks to this, I would say. Mainly. And he's got 80 tanks and we have 66. So we're falling behind now. No tech upgrades at all at this point. Lots of power overflow is another issue. So if we maybe had switched, if we had more engineers in the base, switched into more air, it could be, could be good for us. That could make a difference. Now our engineers get bombed, by the way. So we have a PD here, but we have no engineers to build mexes or anything. So that's failed. And ACU retreats away from this army because this is a huge amount of units. So we're like, okay, he's he's coming for the kill now. But what we didn't see was in his base. I never noticed this, but he had made T2 air. Again, all that reclaim went into a good place. He went for T2 air, made some gunships. And he's going to go after the commander. He's also sending his own com in this direction. He has 55 tanks here. I have 30 in the area, I'm sending a lot more in that direction, but yeah, we didn't see this. And uh, yeah, gunships on my comm. We have to be careful not to send the units through here because then 
Well, we have to rendezvous over at this base. We're trying to build anti-air and stuff. We have no mass. SP is 3,000 mass ahead on reclaim. And... Uh, we are not going to survive here. So... I don't know. I... I don't really like the layout of this map because of the reclaim and I think there's so much mass on the, on the side in the corner that this kind of it's it's just a spammy map you know you can't justify making T2 land really or T2 air too quickly and there we go we don't survive we had defenses but it's just not enough but um like you know very difficult to justify making tech upgrades when resources are so far away and hard to defend that's really what it comes down to that's what people don't seem to get about map making i'm not saying suki specifically doesn't know but in general people don't get that when you put a lot of resources far away from the spawn and make it difficult to defend tech upgrades become extremely difficult to justify um, and the game is just full T1 you know most games will not get to T2 and if they do get to T2 the person who made T2 first is going to lose could all C have saved you uh, potentially but uh, really probably not I mean the gunships were doing a lot of damage and even if it saved me the map position is still terrible for me. I'm still way behind and the gunships can just go elsewhere and I don't have resources to stop that. If you can already charge gunships then yes. yeah. So he's still dead indeed. Right so that's game three. Esperanto played Played better there. You can see in the first games, he made some some bad mistakes that allowed us to win. That game, not so much. And then we got this map. So <laughs> this game, okay, I, for, I actually forgot that this was the, about this game until I until the map opened. So let, let's just enjoy this one. 5x5. Um, five five, map generator. This is the middle of the map here. Let's just take a swooping view. Whoa. Yep. So, yeah, that's the middle of the map. And the sides of the map are, you know, again, the map gen tends to do this where the decals and the shadows look very mountainous, but really it's just small hills. It's a good map for a calm drop. You know what? I should have done a calm drop, to be honest. But uh, we don't do a calm drop. So we're Aeon as well. So the hills, not good for us. Not good for our sanity. And, uh, yeah, kind of, uh, we'll see what happens, right? So, here goes, he's UEF, I'm <laughs> Aeon, and, um, here you go. Thought the bases weren't even connected. Yeah, that would have been better, to be honest. So, we do have a connection on the outside, he's made some labs. We're going, we're, we're like, okay, let's go second and third air, why not? I mean, I'd, I'd already sort of thought... This this is not a real game. This is some kind of weird shit. So I'm gonna do some weird shit. So this is gonna be a disaster, really, on all fronts. But but let's see what happens. So we still haven't made any any units on a five by five. That's pretty dumb to have make five engineers without any defenses whatsoever. So we lose a we lose an engine there. 
and we send an NG towards another lab over here. And uh, this NG will also die. I think. Okay, we successfully block a lot of shots. Build a P gen. And AM P gens are not good at blocking shots, so we, we lose that NG anyway. And we send the ACU to dispatch this mech marine. It's blasted. Map chain game I casted yesterday with the plateau in the middle. Oh, well, it's, a, it's completely different. I mean, there's not even any comparison, really. I uh, Yeah, there's nothing really similar about those maps. In terms of gameplay. So, we're making T2 Max. Because why not? Here comes a bomber. And the bomber is f fails to kill anything. We did a lot of micro that inti to make sure that the bomber didn't get more than one pass. And uh... oh, Ryan, that that makes me think now. I wonder if you build a PD, do, will the end will the lab start attacking the Aeon PD? Oof, that could yeah, that could be interesting. So. Again, plenty of micro to kill this bomber. He also m micros, but yeah. T2 mechs are bad. Wrong. Uh, so yeah, we just walk forward with the ACU. Esperanto is going to the top side. Stop spamming turbo. And uh, yeah, we have some Aurora. But mainly we have... T2 mechs on the way. We're gonna stall though. We haven't got any of this reclaim, so we're gonna stall. If we had the reclaim, we wouldn't stall. And we're gonna lose our NG because of this stupid hill blocking all my shots. And uh, yeah, this map is depressing. But we have we have T2 land or sorry T2 mechs, so that's cures my depression for land factories basic as fuck and he's just gonna spam lobos and I'm not gonna dodge them that's what's gonna happen really to a large degree okay oh successfully dodge those ones and dodge ourselves into T1 PD and uh, begin T2 air because fuck this map. We have a couple of bombers. We get in and try to win air. He's actually making a lot of air. He's probably seen that we have two air factories. And he wins air. Wins air because, um, well, you know, to be honest, UEF Inties are really good. And uh, yeah, once I lost air, then I was like, oh god, this is this is not going well. Then we then as I'm thinking that, I just get shot in the face. Repeatedly, there. Yeah, we lost about three thousand HP there. I'm pretty sure. It's uh, it hurts. That's not really how you dodge either. I Maybe mean, dodge some stuff, but in general, we're not dodging very well. Okay, it's pretty good now. We're killing some lobos. They take three ACU shots because they're OP, and we don't dodge those ones. Down to 5,000 HP. Esperanto obviously has full HP. We're struggling to make T2 air because we have no resources. And I have uh, I have some nice tanks at the back here. Absolute legends. And uh, yeah, they're gonna, you know, kill some stuff. He sends labs after them, which makes no sense to me. But they actually, they actually work. I think we were still killing some stuff over here. <laughs> You're scared of mercies. Yeah, we're still on 5k HP. Close range Lobo shot to the head. Mercies are scary. You have 6 inties. And uh, yeah, really bad stuff happens here. We're like, okay, let's build some more P gens. 
Let's make another T2 Max as well, why not? And uh, yeah, then units come after my ACU and a ghetto gunship, so I'm, that was a bit scary. And so we react. We still only have one swift win. The second one is not built yet because we're stalling. So we come in and snipe. We take a bad turn here, right? And he gets in behind the swifty and the swifty dies. And at that point, we're fucking doomed to not win air ever again. And our ACU is really low HP. And if you run away from Lobos, they will hit you. And if you run towards them, they will run away from you. And we're not dodging right now. So we're down to 2,900. Oh, bit of a loop-de-loop. -loop. And now we have T1 bombers, UEF T1 bombers doing a lot of damage. And a ghetto gunship. So we come in again to snipe the air, but that's going to cost us air once again. We actually got a shot away on the, on the transport. So now we have to try and kill the Lobos. But also dodge units. Once again, we're forced to fly away with our... Air Force, but we have one Swifty. You can't win air with one Swifty. It's not really possible. Now we have to make anti-air, even though we have T2 air as Aeon. It's ridiculous. He's finally attacking on the left side. There's been no defenses there except for one PD forever. And we're very low on HP, and we have no air. And the game is not going too well. 1200 HP now. The pain... The pain. And now another ghetto arrives. That's what's shooting us in the top of the head there. And some mech marines land next to me and we're dead. And we didn't get to finish our second T2 mechs. Which is really disappointing. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, we really screwed up with losing air. If we, if we, had, if we could keep air, if we could have won air, sorry, not keep air, but just won it in the first place, then, then things become possible. But without that, it's, it's totally GG. So we took really bad fights in the air and that cost us the game. Honestly, if we won air. And we have two T2 mechs. There's a way to win this game. You know? There is. There actually is. But it didn't happen. Mainly because we messed up our economy and didn't have enough power to actually build Swifties fast enough. Maybe we should have built Inties. Probably we should have built Inties. But again, they drain even more power. So, yeah. Yeah, my Aurora didn't get cooked by the hills because I made like four of them in the whole game, so that was good. And that was the last game I played last night. Against Esperanto. We overtook him and scored <laughs> towards the end. <laughs> That's what happens when you make T2 air, I suppose, in a 5x5. Five five. And make T2 maxes. So, yeah, that's that. Now we'll watch a, a map gen game that I played. Good counter to hills, exactly. Uh, yeah, so if you're enjoying, please uh, hit like. And we are going to watch a... Yeah, we're going to watch a team game that I played. Let's find it. Um, is it this one? It looks like this one. Dinosaurius, so scared, so we have same score. What? <laughs> I don't get you. I don't get what that means. Uh, our score on the uh, on the ladder league, right on the the league is um, zero. A nice zero score there for us. So we're gonna have to play more ladder. 
this month, like, quite a bit more to have a chance. We need to finish top 8. I mean, 8th right now is only 6 points, so you get 2 for a win, so we have a chance. Sub Swackle. What do you mean, Jagged? No, you're not even in this game. What's wrong? Not zero. Oh yeah, yes zero. I mean, I was minus two before I started playing against Esperanto, so now I gained two good points there. Okay. So the game begins with uh, Shady thinking the game was four v five, but it isn't. So the enemy team we have the wreck who is one of the more competent 1700s that's for sure uh, we have Alex obviously the supreme map chain team game holster we have shady who is mainly a sentence player so this map should suit him uh, we ha he's 1900 we have Obliviener who I think is French player I'm not sure exactly he seems to be a guy who I don't think he has that many games I'm not sure though I think we might have played him on Cobalt Valley I have I think that I think he's the same guy but uh, yeah he's 1700 we have Rowan Morse YT who's in chat sometimes yeah that's the whole team so now our beautiful team we have freshy over here on the left he's he's been around forever we have build more flak this is uh soviet pride oh, another guy who's been around forever really good player 1900 at the moment grimplex is here uh he's 1800 I don't know how he hasn't been around so long I think but yeah he's a uh, obviously a solid player uh, we have Emperor Penguin only 1500 playing behind me and I'm here in the front right with uh, a nice overrated 2100 global thanks to basically tournaments 1v1 tournaments what's up Fortet didn't know Mapchen had a sentence setting. It actually has a land bridge setting. So yeah, you could call that the sentence setting. You definitely could. So Alex gone for a bomber. Second air bomber. And he's making a mech. So I don't know. Can he afford a mech right now? He can't. But he does have tons of mass at the back. Rowan's pinging stuff. Or he, he's, ping, he's pinging an air scout. There's just an air scout. There's no. There's no bomber. Okay. Yeah, there is a land bridge setting, and you can see Shady bringing his. You can see he's assisted Alex's bomber with his inti. The inti gets pulled away by my inti. I don't know what my inti is doing actually. Oh, my inti is is locked onto this bomber. Alex is bringing in a bomber and because his inti was on assist he kind of because this inti was on assist it went and chased a different inti and uh, we did we were reclaiming this and we lost our engineer that was reclaiming it so we got about 300 mass but there's 600 more but we have another engineer and we send it in that direction Emperor Penguin needs to save his NGs don't know that was a very ambitious drop from Penguin and now we fight over the mexes. Obviously, I want them. He doesn't take this one, so I think we take that later on. And yeah, we're we're now fighting air against like three people, so obviously we lose. Build more flak. Soviet is, is taking most of the back mexes, and he's also taking the side mexes. Is the reclaim? There is reclaim. So we have Salem here. Uh, T2 support naval factories here and we have some reek time on this side and then other than that it's just like some small bits of rocks sorry I'm zooming around a lot here let's chill that out another transport from build more flak to basically steel reclaim which is 
great because I'm it's very unlikely I'm gonna get that so we built a couple of mantis just to defend these front three mexes that we're trying to take so this engineer got the Salem wreck and now we're gonna take mexes and we also send our ACU sort of in the middle I mean you know it's it's hard to justify where the ACU should go but here seems reasonable there are three mexes here you can cover this area but in the end Shady is very far from mid, he's not going to spam to middle, and Rowan doesn't have much land spam either. So, another air fight. This time we have a lot of help from Grimplex. How's the league scoreboard work? It's two points for a win, zero points for a draw, minus one for a loss. So if you win a game and lose a game, you get one point. Can you do factories diagonal? It, no, you can't. You can't build them like that, but they can be placed like that on a map. Can I walk into the water? Yeah, this is all beach. All of this is beach, except like right here. But yeah, this is, this is all beach. This is all beach here. And so yeah, we're getting naval production again. Navy is what's going to... You have to... You have to fight for navy obviously I mean we're not going to be fighting land anyway so it looks like overall we lost air there there's now reclaim in the water yeah just for map yeah yeah okay so shady goes for something a bit a bit weird to be honest he goes for a proxy one of the things I always well uh, maybe I don't always say it but I always have in my mind is if you're building a proxy and the enemy don't, don't never build the you know, never build the freaking <laughs> factories next to the water where they can be killed by uh, frigates. It's a Willow's duality. Wow, hating on Grimplex, jeez. So Richard. So yeah, we're he he starts to try and spam units out here. He's he, the engineers got bombed, and now we're gonna kill the factories with frigates and we also return the ACU back in this direction to make sure that they're dead so say if we lost navy we would still have the ACU heading in this direction to deny the the proxy and we also have bombers to try and clean up the mantis and stuff really insane damage by freshy to kill all those four maxes with some t1 land in the bottom, you'll notice that there's still, what, there's like, okay, three naval factories, fair enough. Zero navy from our team. Freshy now gets into the water, and he does what's correct, which is to make a uh, torpedo launcher first. He doesn't have much build power here, though, and he's not adding any more in this direction, so he's way behind on, on navy. If you're behind, you have to catch up. That's the nature of it. So we actually have the most naval production. We have four factories might be too much already might need a bit more eco but yeah we're focusing on you know we have to increase our eco so we have like three mexes upgrading now and we're gonna fuel it with some juicy reclaim Alex is heading to t3 air he has the back base he should be in a good place to to get that quickly enough the wreck is focusing on eco and making t2 air he's making torps he has a naval factory but just one and shady is gonna carry the brunt of the naval obligations he has three naval factories he's cyber so he has nice frigates but we're we have we have, we have a lot of navy right now so we're going to come over and save our teammates naval production from a random frigate we also can kill this stuff though we which i think we do eventually but after he takes some mexes and overall we're doing all right nothing special our eco isn't isn't great though a little more flak is also making t3 air and he has nice positioning it's 50 percent of the way there and you can see he has a perfect spot for his p gen adjacent to both of these factories this one will go t3 after a while we send in some bombers to try and kill the t1 max t2 max sorry but we lose all of our air and the bombers and uh, we have some torp, uh, torp from our teammate and we're just basically we can't attack here we have to just stay away so the torp is not very useful to be honest 
Not a great use of a torpedo launch uh, bomber. Janus from Oblivioner. Also, he has found the naval production, killed the torp launcher, and will kill the factories now. So, yeah, this is going to be bad. Also, this position is dead. Probably to a frigate, I'm not sure, though. These frigates do... This one, in particular, has... 650 mass killed, 730 make that, and Freshy is making tons of land units. He's made loads of T1 land, and he's up against T2PDs, so that, that doesn't really work out. So we're making T2 land now, making sure every mech is T2, except for, well, the, the front ones, which seem to keep dying on me. T3 air production, let's see. Alex with a big grid planned. No adjacency to his initial factory, though. And uh, that's a PGen done. Let's take a look. Yeah, PGen finished for... Soviet. And, uh, yeah, he's making, making air now. Making full T2 mechs. Also, he gave these mechs to, to Freshy. They'll, he actually had these at, at one point. So, uh, I think, <laughs> yeah, the wreck tells Shady to, to run away with his, with his frigates, because I have way more frigates. Problem is, having way more frigates right now is not very useful, because if you try and use them, you probably, well, there's torpedo launchers, there's T2 Navy soon, there's two players against me, and you can't really do much with this. With the frigates, so they're probably a... Not a, not the best investment. Probably should have more eco instead. So, Freshy with T2 and the gun walks forward. He has a lot of units with him, but he's against a lot of PDs. And I think if the PDs just focus fire him, he should die, really. Because there's a shield. I mean, it's got 5, 6 PD about to finish. Rowan should make some T1 at the front here. In this position, you should make some T1 PD here. And Alex, Alex knows his sentence apparently. Yeah, he's being focus fired now. Freshy on low HP, but he's about to get out of range of the PDs, and he'll be able to fire him a lot of tanks if they don't retreat. They are told to retreat. Takes them a little while to do though. This is the main things a factor in choosing. Well, my opponent is T2 Navy, so I should also really be T2 Navy. Otherwise, I'm at risk of losing. But, um... It depends. Like, if you think you can crush, then you need to make it earlier. If you don't, then you should probably focus more on the economy. That's kind of the thinking. I'm, the guy behind me now has... Uh, yeah, Emperor Penguin has T3 air, which is nice. I am going to contest the Navy. At this point, I am I'm, I'm aware that the bottom is completely lost so I don't know if you know anything about sentence you know that if you just give a one pawn for free and the other is contested you are going to lose the game because I mean the Navy over here I mean it's not doing anything right now because there's no cruiser but once there's a cruiser if we look at the range of this thing he can hit mexes in here this expansion is doomed. This, these mexes need to be defended by TMD. These are even dying to, to frigates. So I don't know why he has a Cooper. Doesn't really make too much sense. But, but yeah. Now, like if you lose, if you give up Navy for free, then you really should be losing. Now what? So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking. God damn it! This is this is terrible. Why did I join this game at this point? It's just it just seems like completely losing scenario however I do have a good team and my team has better economy uh, by the looks of it only slightly at this point but I mean we have Soviet Grimplex and they're in the back spot so they're they're in the carry slots really now I'm kind of in the carry slot because I stole some mexes from my <laughs> lower rated teammate these submarines were really really annoying 
And I tried to deal with them with Salem's, but... I mean, Shady microed them well. I mean, he doesn't have anything else to do, but he did micro them well. And you can see he's actually doing quite a bit of damage to my Salem, even. And I don't have T2R, and I'm not going to make T2R because that's an investment that I'm not interested in. It's not going to be worth it for me. Better to just have teammates make torpedoes for me. I don't know if I responded to you already, Harry, but hello. <laughs> in case I didn't. If I did, then, well, you get two hellos. Alex. Alex Eco is not very good, really. He's He doesn't have any storages really I mean very little meanwhile Soviet has a t3 max Soviet has two t3 max and we have some torps from him and the subs are well one of the subs is dead now now torps coming in from the wreck he's got t3 air and he's making t3 maxes look yeah, I looked at the Rex base and I was like, oh, fuck. Five T3 mechs from him. That's bad. He's making T2 Navy now. Making Cruiser. We do have three T3 air players at the moment. Oblivion are now also with T3 air in response. And uh, he's got a couple of Cruisers as well to kill plenty of stuff from Freshy. Freshy has retreated back to this position. He's built some TMD. But they're not actually defending anything. Well, there's one, maybe two mexes defended. What's up, Nile? And, uh, yeah, I told... <laughs> I told, uh... Just whoever to just make torps. I, uh, just my team in general. Because of this... And I also have T2, Stealth, and Torpedo on the Commander. So I'm like, if we don't win this navy soon, this game should not be winnable. Because eventually I'll... If I don't win, then, like, this damage will continue and... I will just... I won't be able to do anything in the game. So, I just get asked for a load of torps. And it turns out we had so many people on air that we absolutely crushed T3 air. There was about f five colors as... Um, Shady was saying, and now with the torps, I should be able to do something. And there's loads of reclaim generated in the in the water now for me to try and grab. And we also, because we were watching everyone else with T3 Maxes, we need to make some of our own. Alex tries his best to, you know win air but yeah th this is a major mistake now from Alex actually he's making so much production but you can't afford to make all this production like that's 6,000 mass in factories but he's stalling so they're it's useless really so they think I'm going t3 I'm not though no real point in going t3 here and we're just focusing on microing Trying to micro our Salem's versus his Salem's. And there's a couple of destroyers from the wreck, but really not much naval production from the wreck here. But yeah, his eco is, is huge, but he's really putting it into more eco, I guess. Alex says Oblivioner to go to join top navy. <laughs> Look at this. Make T3 HQ. I'll give you transport. So that's the plan that Alex has come up with. Is that a Rambo Torpcom? It is. It is. And now I get pinged. So we have done a bit of damage with our Torpcom. Now Solaces from Grimplex come in. Those are really powerful Torps. And that one's allowed to get away. <laughs> See, so yeah, I have to be careful with the with the commander. Have to be very careful. But it's okay. Very difficult to <laughs> to uh, micro three three different people to micro ASF together. It's not easy. Solace comes in, does a lot of damage. And we're just going to push now. We have... What do we have in our navy? We have five destroyers and a cruiser and 34 frigates. 
more reinforcements coming. T3 gunships from Soviet. And it's time to time to win. Win the Navy and I start making T3 on the commander now. Time to push. There's one very low HP destroyer. There's a bit of production so there will be more Salem's but uh, there's basically no Navy now from from the wreck. He's lost his destroyers. I think they got killed by my Salem's. T3 gunships retreat away from the cruiser. All X comes in and wins air against Soviet by the looks of it. And torpedoes come in after my sonar, which is sad. It's providing a lot of stealth. We have so little mass as Oblivioner. If you look at the total mass, we're like 20k ahead now, which is nice, 25k. HQ goes down. And we we just have to we just have to win navy now. Now is the time. He's planning a lot of naval factories, but I don't think they're going to get built. And now at this point, there's no real way to save navy except by tons of torps arriving. At this point, we still have six T two T two ships. I have no money to run this as Oblivioner. He's made T three HQ here. And now he's made, he's making a T3 support factory over here in the corner at this point to try and save the Navy. And he has no T3 mechs. So he's really had a very, very weak economy despite winning Navy a long, long time ago. Or well, not even winning Navy, just, just getting Navy for free basically. Torps go down. We're going to move up and kill this production. Wreck is finally reacting by making lots of factories, but it's way too late for that. And now we have T3 land, so and we still have Torp, so we can still kill stuff in range of us. And we get some Sam. And, uh, yeah, we still have air control, thanks to Penguin. Soviet and Grimplex. Grimplex with a very nice grid here. And he is... He's got a lot of eco. So Hank, it does. It is quite like Sentence. So, let's see what this is. What a damn boring slot I get, says Freshy. I mean, you could have had a naval fight if you wanted, but he, he tried to just walk through middle. Who should I nuke, says Rowan Moore. So he's... Rowan has made... A lot of T3 Max and he's made a nuke. And then t now I find the <laughs> I find the T3 support factory. I'm like, oh fuck. Can't believe this. Where's the land fight though? Well it he walked up here and then he walked away after six PDs shot at him. So I find this, I'm trying to kill this factory before the BC comes out. I see that the battle cruiser is almost finished. It's really close. Oh, I think I only notice it now, actually. So we're trying to kill the engineers that are building it. Trying to kill the factory before it... Because then we can kill the battle cruiser before it arrives. And the battle cruiser... <laughs> finishes. <laughs> With about a second to go. And then Freshy just gives me a load of mass, which is very nice of him. And we have made T3 Navy now. Battleship moving out. We're also spamming Medusa on this island to try and attack and Shady is making artillery to to defend. Did you nuke says Alex. And the battle cruiser comes out and actually doesn't do too much before going down to the frigates and the T2 Navy. And now my team is almost a hundred K mass ahead. So really, my team was kind of beastly. Alex's eco, I guess, was was just not up to it. Oblivioners is also quite slow, so... I mean, just look at Soviets. Full T3 Max. He's got SMD loaded. He's almost got a second SMD, and now a Tsar by Grimplex is queued up. He's also got SMD, but not loaded. And uh, this nuke is, I don't know, 
well it's not it's not loaded yet but it will be fired very soon and we're gonna take this base there's nice t3 max rex to to reclaim and I got nuked here so my teammate helpfully built t3 built the SMD because I didn't have t3 in my base anyways but um it's not loaded so he comes to nuke my base he could have actually nuked Grimplex because Grimplex does not have SMD loaded. You see Grimplex walking out of his base there. <laughs> so that was a pretty good nuke. It killed SMD, killed some PGens and stuff. But it was a decent nuke. Not a great nuke. Maybe killing this might have been better. I'm not sure though. And actually that's a nuke from the wreck directly after. So he's going to nuke... Oh yeah, he's gonna nuke Emperor Penguin, so the whole right side now gets nuked. Okay, just spamming Medusa. This doesn't work too well. Look at these beautifully placed PDs that I just suicide Medusa into. Just fantastic. And spread out as well so they don't take AoE damage. So we have some battleship. How many battleships do we have now? We have three battleships and we're stalling insanely hard because, well, we lost T3 mexes in our economy. We need to just stop making battleships now and regain our eco. Uh, Soviet has tele and laser at this point already and he's making T3 and he's making a soul ripper. Kind of a good eco that he's got there. Grimplex is covering us, and he's covering his Tsar, which he's built. Gunships come out to kill our Salems, but we have cruisers in range. Soviet also with a T3 support factory coming on the island on the beachhead, and he's going to make T3 engineers there. That's, oh my god, yeah, this Grimplex decides to fly in with all of his air, and uh, on his own into the wreck and Olex's air and he loses all of his air there 2v1 he's pretty good but he's not that good that team coordination impeccable yeah oh yeah here comes oh Rowan is here now so there's even Rowan with even more ASF so yeah not great and now the Zara arrives at the wreck's base <laughs> Here comes the Tsar. What's it going to kill? There's a nuke right there that's being loaded. And the Tsar is shot down out of the sky. It's going to land on the ACU. And the Rex survives on 500 HP. Oh my god. And three Maxes die. The nuke survives and so does the wreck. So not the best use of a... <laughs> of, a, of a Zyre, but it almost got the it almost got the snipe done. Grimplex is making RAS SUs. He's going to make loads more air factories. Strats coming in now from the wreck after SMD full share. Uh, full share was on. Yes. The the fat boy is brought in to try and defend the SMD. The Strats get shot down. And they failed to snipe the SMD using the, using the, wait, did he mean to use the fat boy like that? Or did that just happen by accident? Now I'm confused. It looked like he meant to do that, but then I'm not sure if he did actually. So there's some strats donated. That was seven strat bombers failed to do their job. We're making T1 anti air versus Seraphim gunships. Not really great. Not really great. But, uh, yeah, we're doing more damage, pushing forward. Some random Salem's finding damage. Battleships have cleaned up a lot of this base. You can see the RT base is gone. He's being Shady's being pushed back, and he just gets pushed back, tries to rebuild, gets pushed back further. And Spider started by Soviet. Did somebody else make a an experimental? The bug is not finished yet. Oh no, that's the second bug, so there is a finished bug. Emperor Penguin is in Soviet space, which is nice of him. 
found some shelter so we got some air staging on my front and the soul ripper is heading forward battleships are doing a lot of damage and we have monkey lord finished which we don't really want to use because well, I mean Grimplex has lost loads of his air so I'm kinda thinking if we send a monkey lord at this point it will die so what we've, we're doing now is building a lot of flak is that building T1 anti-air? oh god well that's not great but we are building flak out of support factories <laughs> there's three commanders here protecting themselves from uh, telly with all these PDs and uh, the enemy team is making a maver it's already over one eighth of the way to complete to completion don't think you've ever seen Grimplex do a good air fight <laughs> I hear some strats but I don't know where they are the wreck has a has T3 gunships given to him by Olex, I assume, and he has a chicken bot. There is a soul ripper from. And we get a nuke launched towards the beachhead. And the wreck gives a big WTF. Why are you nuking there? Beachhead gonna die, says Soviet. Battleships are doing mad damage, killing most of Shady's base. He's building bricks right now. Here comes the nuke, and what's it going to kill? It's going to kill an Omni. Do a little bit of damage to the spider. It doesn't even kill the spider. My Omni's alive, so we actually had two Omnis there. One each, and yeah, that, uh, that nuke was really, really bad. This is an easy win, says Wreck. Maybe it was a long time ago, but right now I'm making a mega in the water. And uh, there's a couple of soul rippers here. I did lose my HQ, so I'm going to replace that somewhere. We start building a lot more production. A lot of NGs to get... get t uh, Replacement HQ. We're going to go T3 land soon. Chicken moves forward. There's some nice gunships behind it. And the T2 Navy will start to fire at it and the chicken doesn't really have too much to kill here without getting too close to the navy and taking a lot of damage there's really only T1 factories here cruisers have to back away slightly the soul rippers are waiting hiding inside one another what happened to my spider here's my spider it's still alive I didn't want to send it out because I thought it would die to something like this without flak and now the the wreck gets baited in by the Soul Ripper. Soviet moves in with his ASF and has a lot of Sams here as well under stealth. And Grimplex also comes in and gets a lot of ASF kills and Soul Ripper doesn't even die. Fucking stealth says the wreck and now the gunships, the experimental gunships go to work on the, the wreck's chicken bot who's losing health extremely rapidly. Uh, he's not going to survive. There goes the chicken. And Olex arrives with his air. Against three. And the soul rippers are also. Taking a lot of hits. And tanking damage. You can see that both the soul rippers drop out of the sky. And there's flax. And there's sams. And Olex loses everything, and now Rowan sends in his ASF. Shady Socks asks, "Why are we suiciding all our ASF?" It's a it's a really good question because those Rippers were a huge threat. Says Olex. Strap bomber goes after my destroyer, but it has vets, so it survives. What a beast! And I think we we should make T3 land soon. We, st we still don't even have T3 mechs in our base, which is terrible. And now we think, hey, we can probably send the spider forward because we've, we've won air. Why do both teams not give air control to one guy? I don't know. They're just not interested, but the wreck has made a lot of strap bombers. He just wiped that SMD clean off the face of the earth, and he's sending the strats towards 
the next SMD. Will he get through? He does get through and kills the SMD. That was not very well shielded at all. <laughs> and uh, our megalith finishes. So that megalith moves out. Now I'm kind of afraid for my commander. I probably shouldn't walk away. I should probably step forward. Spider arrives, cleans up this stuff, and a nuke is launched. Freshy is going to lose his base. And another nuke is launched towards Grimplex, I believe, who only had that one SMD, so he should lose a lot of stuff. Now Soviet just has so much mass, he's sending it away. He's also building Ascathus and sending mass to me and Emperor Penguin, so that's a bit strange. Our spider doesn't know that the other spider is coming. And now strats come in after our spider bot, soften it up for Alex's spider to finish it off. So we do lose our, actually a hover bombing strat there for no reason. And we lose our spider. <clears throat> but at this point we do have a nice replacement. The crab moves forward. Too proud, yeah that's probably what it is. And uh, our Medusa raiding T3 Maxes. That's pretty nice. Grimplex. Oh, a nuke is launched towards Grimplex. Where did... Was a nuke shot down? Oh no, we got nuked again, did we? Or no, I can't remember. More nukes lo launched and loaded from here. Where is that going to go? Oh, is there SMD loaded here? There is not. So here's Grimplex's base. Not the best nuke. I mean, he left a lot of P-Gens alive. He killed T3 Maxis and a lot. Of, he killed a lot of stuff, but maybe he could have placed it better. I'm not sure. That was quite good. Here's, a, here's another one. Once again, you probably want to kill the SMD here. But... Not a bad nuke either. What's up, Philip? Are the nukes up as strong as the normal one? No, they do a lot less damage. Functionally, basically the same for a for a base, but they not for like. Oh yeah, they also have less range, less range and less damage. So spider versus mega is not a good fight for a spider. It does eventually get into range and do a decent little bit of damage, but. Nice air cover for my team, but we have a mega. The enemy team has no. Where did that go? Okay, he's shooting a nuke at my base now. At some of my power, I thought he was gonna nuke, try and nuke the 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 mega, actually, but he didn't. The mega steps forward, sees a beautiful pigeon grid in front of it. There goes the nuke dead already he really had to just launch that nuke anywhere as fast as he could Rowan has uh, uh, completed the Maver and we're gonna go to work on the just killing all of the Rex base goodbye to all those pigeons we have total air control we also have plenty of flak with the uh, with the the mega, and yeah, we lost some pigeons here in the mechs, but overall it's not a big deal. And the Scathus has not really been under construction. I mean, there's some unupgraded hives making it apparently, but the Maver is completed, and the Maver is going to begin firing probably on Soviet's base if I remember correctly. The Rex base is doomed our mega stops shooting for some reason that's really cool so we get it back to killing pgens we suicide a load of artillery into t2pd for probably the next 15 minutes and we have t3 land up bricks bricks and flak move out into the great unknown and look for look for some damage the maver begins shooting at Oh, 
Oh, we just missed something there. The wreck. Just control Cade while most of Grimplex's air units were over his commander. So he just control Cade and killed... I don't know how many hundreds of of ASF there. The base of, of Soviet is dying. And uh, somebody might have seen something in the corner there. <laughs> the Mega carries on, finds another PGN grid. And this one goes down even faster than the first one. Alex loses basically all of his power. And he has stealth, sorry, has cloaking. T3 and laser. Shady also has cloaking and laser. And uh, nuke is launched now from a nuke sub once again uh, towards the back base, towards Soviet's base. I'm not sure where the Maver is firing now. It's it's not firing, is it? It's retargeting somewhere. Nuke kills this once again. Mega steps forward and uh, Alex doesn't have power to, to cloak but we weren't quick enough to target him with the, with the Mega. Now a spider appears in range of the Mega and I just try and walk into the spider to <laughs> try and do as much damage with the... Once the Mega dies I'm hoping that it will do enough damage to kill the spider but instead we just don't shoot at the spider because we walk past it. It's not great. We do do like 8,000 damage with our death though. Uh, where is Soviet Pride? Yeah, so almost <laughs> both these bases are dead. I'm not sure what the Maver is shooting at. Oh, it's shooting here at the, at the Rassus Oh god. They don't get killed, do they? Oh god, that was close. Oh. Oh god. Ah, it's so close to killing them. <laughs> now the shield pops back up. There's another megalith hiding under a czar here. And the bricks are finding their way into bases. Are they are they dying? How are they still alive? How is the Maver missing so much? It just keeps missing. Is it targeting them? Maver, it's forty eight thousand mass killed. Oh, did it retarget? What's the Maver shooting? It's shooting T3NGs, building a Zar now. That's a really weird target to choose. And we have some nuke subs, but you have no energy to actually load them, so they're not loading at the moment. Cloak Mazer Calm moves forward. And uh, Bricks is just going to clean up Rowan's base, also going to kill whatever power Olex had left. Nuke is launched somewhere, I don't know where. And uh, there's a Tsar trying to sneak around the edge of the map. Uh, but will it be needed? There's a small matter of <laughs> a TML base in the corner. And the Maver is dead. Please use the Maver on the back base, says the wreck. Uh, what Maver? <laughs> Grimplex with the Pog Jump. <laughs> and and the wreck says he's foeing everyone on his team. Here comes the Tsar. There's not enough ASF to kill it. And uh, Olex doesn't have any energy to use his cloak. And without the Maver. I think their position might be lost. While Alex was uncloaked, he was targeted by the Tsar manually. And he goes down to the Tsar eventually. 
<laughs> gunships go and take revenge on the TML base, but it doesn't really matter at that point. The Maverick is already dead. And uh, the game is pretty much over at this point. Yes, what's up, Andrew? It has. It has. This is the land bridge setting. So that's why you see uh, this sort of settings like construction. And uh, yeah, they go back to building the, the Scathus now. <clears throat> <laughs> I enjoyed nothing, says Fresh Eat Me either, says the wreck. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, nothing much happening now, because it's just Oblivioner left. I mean, Shady is alive, but he has just ma he has just energy storage and a commander. Oblivioner, I don't think he's really doing anything at the moment. Shady control Ks. Somebody left the game. And it's desynced, and uh, and that's that's the game. Nothing else happening. Well, Oblivioner actually fires some nukes away at something, probably at the back base, but they won't get through. Oh no, he's firing towards. This he fired both of them in the same place. Oops. And yeah, we have, you know, two megas to walk in this direction. We have bricks. These bricks are heroes. Look at that guy. 16,000 mass killed. Oblivioner does kind of try and fight, try to fight on and makes a fatty, but because it's desynced, it's sort of... I mean, look. There's not much else to see here. Yeah, I agree, Andrew. I think it's I think it's quite good. Sometimes you get a very dodgy map, but the quality overall is very solid. And uh Yeah, that's kind of it. Wow, he has a lot of nuke subs. And a lot of them have a lot of damage. The most epic comeback. <laughs> and oh yeah, he's just in the water now. <laughs> he's got the bubble shield. <laughs> he made the bubble shield to um, defend himself from, or to defend the Maver, I think. Freshy loses all of his mexes now. <laughs> Finally, they're all nuked by Oblivioner. And uh, <laughs> mission accomplished there. <laughs> And the the torps will will kill the will kill the commander. Very soon, there's quite a few torps coming. How many how many rassesus does he have? Not a bad number. Forty two. Forty two. I'm so shocked that these didn't get killed in the end. And now a nuke is launched <laughs> randomly into the water. He's trying to nuke the torp launch the torpedo bombers. Hundred and one thousand mass killed uh, Mega. Well that's what happens when you kill bases for free, I guess. I hear the torps launching. Where are the torps? Where are the torps? Oh, hey, look, it's it's Soviet. He's in the water now. Why is Sarah battleship nuke more expensive than nuke sub nuke? Because sending master Freddy as BM. No, no, no. I mean, just so he can rebuild, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sophie just is teleporting around. And GG. Game ends. I think so Oblivion is dead by that point in the real game. Sarah Battleship Nuke is more expensive because battleships are more useful. Battleships are useful whether or not you build a nuke out of them. So a nuke sub is really only useful if you actually load a nuke in it. That's the only way it justifies its cost. Whereas a battleship, if you just build it and it shoots other battleships, it's, you know, it's as good as another battleship. So, that's why. So that was a nice game. That we played there. Isn't the nuke sub weaker? Is it weaker than the battleship nuke? I don't know, actually. I think they're similar. They're certainly similar. I don't think the cost of the battleship nuke compared to the nuke sub is dependent on the strength of those nukes. Exactly. But also I don't know um, whether, yeah I'm not sure, I'd have to look up the stats exactly. Uh, okay, what should we watch now? So bad. It's very slightly stronger. Okay. Same range battleship nuke does more damage. Okay. Well, the main use of a nuke sub is obviously the nuke, and then after that, it's um, the TML. The TML is actually very powerful on the nuke sub. I mean. It doesn't justify the cost, but it is actually quite powerful. And if people don't, you can snipe things with it if you don't reveal that you have those powerful TMLs until you actually start using them on a good target and people won't have SMD. Then you could actually very, like, you know, you could very quickly snipe something. Boats? What is that? Okay, one sec. Let's, uh, let's find a game. Adam has sent us something. Could you say the same about Sarah TG Cruiser? Which, which part of, of the thing, of the same? Okay, we're gonna stop casting your own games and cast some other games now. So I'm gonna cast the one Adam sent recently. Yesterday. Wait, actually, one sec. Adam, which is better? The one you sent yesterday with Grimplex or the one you're sending me now? Snipe SMD with Nukes of TML. But you can't really hide having Seraphim Cruisers. But you can hide having Nuke Subs. You know, it's very obvious when you have... When... When... Naval Sub... Naval Cruisers are... Coming. Alright, one sec. Search for replay here. I'll go open this, this game sent yesterday. Sub snack mart. Yeah, with subs TML at 2k damage, it means if two of them hit uh, an SMD, then it's dead. Now, there's likely going to be a, 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 a shield, but you know. Right, I'm opening the Grimplex one right now. We got Icy Nightmare, Cascade, Grimplex, and Sheikah. Let's 
So, 10x10, 10 10, asymmetric, <laughs> FFA. <laughs> uh, map gen. A ridiculous concept. But, uh, here it is. So, Routinger. Okay, so, yeah, being in the middle feels bad. Grimplex on top looks good for him. Only four mexes in the base for Cascade. Six in the base for Grimplex. Six very nearby for IC5 for Sheikah. So that's a bit sad. And, uh, yeah, IC also spawns right next to this ice. A few trees. Uh, but he is in the middle. Uh, so that's not great for him. So yeah, looks looks very nice for Grimplex. Another mech for him. Hydro to the left of Cascade's base. Nice bit of reclam. Sheikah is... Uh, oh my god. Oh no, look at this. He's stuck in the corner. There's no there's there's water on this map as well. Jesus Christ. Why is there water on the map? As though you couldn't be fucked enough. Now there's water as well, so she gets just trapped here in the corner. Icy also gets a big chunk of mass here. Another max, I mean, and he can move to the right. Now this base is interestingly placed. Grimplex could be a candidate. Oh, another base up here. So battles to be had between Cascade and uh, and Grimplex. But um, uh, yeah, <laughs> this this whole idea is is I think we just we're seeing a lot of the problems that are just inherent in the idea <laughs> in these games <laughs> so yeah there's also loads of the terrain is 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 just water so the map is tiny so here comes uh i see i see the good position to take these mexes but again cascade is in the middle which means he's sort of close to all the expansions but He's in between Grimplex and Icy and Sheikah as well. I mean, Sheikah is going to try and make... People are making units on, on FFA. Don't know what, what the story is. Uh, does Mapchain have an ability to save a map? The name is the seed. So if you like a map, save the name. And then I think you host with the name. I think that's, that's how it works. So save the name if you want to save a map. These matches are just bloodbaths. Yeah, let's see what's Cascade looking like. Well, he, we can't. This is one of the problems. We can't actually get a look at what he knows is around. We just get to see what everyone is scouted. So that's just one of the limitations, really. So we don't actually know what he knows about. And I didn't spot where. Well, he definitely knows about this anyway, because he's queued it up. But I don't know if he knows about the other expansions nearby. Grimplex might think about making a T2 Max. He's making a PD in this expansion, and he's making a PD in this expansion. You think asymmetry FFA actually makes making units good? You, you might be right. I mean, it makes it makes certain people have just shit games based on random chance as well though but yes you i mean i kind of see what you mean but really the, I, like there's no chat going on here i don't know if people are in chat with each other on voice but i don't think they are maybe they are it could be wrong but there's definitely no in-game chat going on asking for alliances and they don't i mean there's no there's no alliance here and there's no alliance here so the only possibility is that there's one between icy and cascade Icy has sent his commander into the corner of the map. That's a really weird thing to do. 
His base is now under pressure from Shika. Shika needs to keep dodging because there's loads of Lobos here. He should keep the pressure up, but he probably doesn't know. Well, he doesn't have air, so he doesn't know where the ACU is. He's expecting the ACU to be here somewhere, which is why he's probably being so cautious. On the other side, Cascade is trying to make the gun, but it looks to be upgrading very, very slowly. Grimplex is walking into the base of Cascade. It might be Swackle. But, like, it's so difficult if you're relatively close in rating to get a kill in the opening. Like, it's just very, very difficult to do that. You can't really expect yourself to win against somebody who's even 200 rating less than you, or even 3 or 400 rating less than you. There's no guarantee that you're going to be able to, to crush them in, you know, a few minutes. It's not happening, really. Sheikki gets his first vet, gets some overcharges in there, makes an air factory. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Icy is just chilling with his ACU. The most powerful unit he has is doing nothing at all, but he does have two bases. Grimplex, meanwhile, has three bases. He hasn't fully scouted. Nobody scouted into this, this side. Hard to win a knife fight. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. And all of Cascade's pigeons have been bombed, so he can't really finish the gun. He has 40 power income. He, he yeah, he, he really, he's not going to finish the gun upgrade. Let me put it that way. He now control K's, and uh, he is defeated. So Grimplex now should be absolutely crushing. He has no opponent in front of him. He's gonna get. He can get some reclaim here. I mean, a lot of the reclaim is dead, but Shika and Icy have been sort of fighting back and forth, and they're gonna continue fighting back and forth. It seems. Shika very low on HP, and Grimplex is just gonna have the whole top of the map for himself, and he will almost certainly win. I mean, it's very difficult to get a snipe together. Shika is now capturing a hydrocarbon, who's very cheeky. And she gets walking north. This is the pain of being in between. <laughs> well, now he's a, he's put himself in between two units. Grimplex kills this expansion. There's no units building here. If there were, it wouldn't have died. But there aren't, so it will. And this map is really a 5x5. Five five. Like, what the hell? Nice. Finally, this expansion is scouted. <laughs> That's amazing. Icy makes the gun. And Grimplex is just so far ahead that there's really no chance of, of anything other than him winning happening. He's not going to send his ACU forward. And unless there's like 15 gestures to find him or 10 gestures to find him soon, then I don't think he's going to live. Uh, <laughs> Icy says GG as he gets attacked from behind by Grimplex. And she gets still trapped in the corner with, you know, six or seven mexes. And this is it. Control case is whole base. Only wants a gun com really. Doesn't need anything else. Oh, T1 bombers. Sorry, I got distracted by whatever the hell is going on in Aeolus right now. It looks uh, interesting. <laughs> he goes into the water just to survive a bit longer. Oh, Sheikah made T2 Navy. What a beast. Unfortunately, there is like 100 units in his base now. And he walks into the middle of them and explodes. GG. Yeah, this asymmetric thing. 
I don't know. Uh, when I set units to snipe mode, they won't actually target the ACU. Yep, that's true. You started a culture war between the Chinese and the Australians. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, some units can't prioritize the ACU. A lot of units can't. That's how it works. All right, let's look for another game. Let's see, did anyone play ladder while we were streaming? Oh, looks like they did. Taiwanese, okay. <laughs> oh God, where are we going with this, eh? Right, this will probably be the last game we watch and then we'll, we'll call it. We got Auto Noob and Esperanto. Big differential in rating, exactly 300 points. Which means it should be very, it's, well, I mean, percentage is very low chance of Auto Noob winning, but let's see what kind of game we have here. Seemed to work fine before I got the mod. No, you can't focus the ACU with a lot. I don't know. Well, you need to give me specific units so that I know whether they can actually focus the ACU or not. Bit of chat. Both are Seraphim. The map is point of reach. So they both have a good faction for this map. Esperanto does not build a PGen. Auto Noob does. No, no, we're not going to play any ladder on stream today. Tanks and Ilshis cannot focus the ACU since um, over a year ago. They can't. Yeah. Yeah, he always keeps it very... Uh, Similar to his regular. Okay, he builds a tank for his transport, but he builds it way too early, obviously. I mean, that's clear. You basically wanted building as the transport starts, so it, it could have come out now. You'll see probably the next unit won't come out in time to be on the transport, so he built it like one unit too early, that's all. Uh, yep. You're definitely wrong, Ryan. Sorry. Okay, may, might have built built it two units too early, but still, whatever. Having a tank is nice. Only four engines though. Auto noob, his transport comes out a bit later, but he also has a tank. So that's nice. People are. This is the new. The new deal with people. This is what they do, I guess. I mean, it's not a. It's quite reasonable, but very often you wouldn't have seen people do this. Oh, Esperanto drops two engineers in this expansion. That's greedy. That is greedy. See, if 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 he had been contested here, which is normal. I mean, uh, yeah, I do have a second monitor. I don't use it in the game, but I use it for... Like, I have the chat on the second monitor right now. Yeah, if, if Autonoop had contested this, which is actually... The old meta was always to drop to this island if you're in the south you would drop the left island but changed for some unknown reason so auto noob could have punished big time there second transport would be the true greed right now 
What units can snipe ACU? E well, it means c that can use snipe mode. It is, um... Yeah, it doesn't mean what can snipe. It means what, um... What can use snipe mode? Uh, labs can for ghettos. Um, gunships can... I think T2 bombers can, but obviously it doesn't really matter with T2 bombers in terms of how they work. Uh, what else? Snipers can. Probably change so you can drop your secondary expansion too, which is just better. Well, no. I mean, yes, that's why it changed, but no, it's not just better. Like, this should not... That's not a good move to drop two engineers here. Even dropping one here and taking a, a slower path and stopping here is not... That's not just better at all. That's dangerous. That could lose you this left expansion. T2 Max for auto. That's quite nice. He does seem to be low on energy though. Well, he's making it work at the moment. Very, very slow to this expansion though. Idle transport. He actually has two transports now. Which seems unnecessary because one of them was idle for a long time. So this is, this is going to hurt if he doesn't get this expansion fast like this. And it looks like SP is on the hunt for a transport. He's got scouts in the area. Oh no 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 no. Oh he's found he's found the Indies. He's gonna he's gonna win air here. Not gonna allow them to get away. And they're dying for free. They do turn around to do a bit of damage, but barely get a shot off. And that's nasty. But he doesn't hang around to stop the expansion. That's that's a that's kind of that's a bad mistake. Oh, he's building a proxy now on this island. But Otto has not been greedy here. He's built three land factories, which is more than you would normally make. It looks like he knows that this is. He definitely knows that this is here. He scouted something, because he's targeted something. He's targeted NGs. The terrain kind of messed with the bomber, but he still got three kills, and gets another killed all the engineers are dead so this proxy should be dealt with soon and but overall I mean look Esperanto has all of this island and uh, auto is missing one two three four five six seven eight nine ten mexes brutal so definitely looks good for Esperanto this this completely failed however I mean, almost completely. He will get some damage from a few zoos that get across. Auto needs to react and start shooting these. Because now it's going to get out of range and be even more annoying. He doesn't react at all. And there's T2 air from Esperanto now. Gunship's on the move. And he's going to make some eco. Wants to catch up in terms of T2 mechs. Does not allow Auto to have that advantage on him. Auto with some bad air micro. But he will still kill the, the gunship. These zoos are quite, quite annoying. The gunships didn't really do very, very well for Esperanto there. To be honest, T2 air up for auto, and now he's going to make T2 B gen. SP obviously already has one. A lot of his engineers are idle though. He begins moving them once again. He's got naval production here. Naval production here. A little bit here and a little bit over here. So a nice spread of navy and he's going to build more in this position. Which is quite nice. But it can make your, your naval production more vulnerable to to raids. But overall it's, it's just a lot of damage being taken by auto. And he's missing, you know, four mexes on this island, these islands. And, uh, you know, several over here. He's not getting the reclaim. That from this proxy, which is really the main advantage he needs to take from this failed proxy, is uh, get the reclaim. Now he's going to try and do a drop. It's up Grimplex. You featured a few times. Oh my god. Drop onto the front. Maybe this is what gave Otto the idea of this, is taking all this damage from some Zooey's and T1 tanks. He's even losing some air units now. Ah. A lot of damage from that T1 drop. 
a lot of damage. And now it looks like going to be an air win from Esperanto. On top of that, he's 6k mass ahead. And uh, he has units on the front to try and defend a drop. Drop onto this island. It's not the greatest place to drop because a frigate could just be coming out of the factory. At this point, they're all actually like halfway built. So he's kind of lucky, but a frigate could just come out and the fr they, these will get cleaned up by frigates, basically. And they're only T1 mexes, so it's not the best place. Compared to, you know, the damage that was done here. And there's still a tank alive. It's got five kills, 300 mass killed. Air is one. And a torpedo bomber is going to be sent into the, the Inties. Bit of a waste. Yeah, also dropping here is not great because this is a position that can just be killed by frigates. Which is actually what's happening. Two auto on the other end. Bit of a drop to this island. That's some nice damage. It's quite good to kill these mexes, but it's it's happening so late in the game compared to the damage that was taken by auto. And also just the he still hasn't been able to get these mexes or hold on to them. And uh, yeah, this is just uh, looks comfortable for, for Esperanto now. That's a lot of T1 bombers. <laughs> Look how fast they build. I mean, I'm sped up, but... Okay, back to Inties now. 24 T1 bombers around. That poor Zooey was never going to survive. The journey from being 1400 and bullied by chat to 1800 crusher. <laughs> well, you know, that air fight was not so great now that we saw. Gotta work on those. <laughs> SB with Zooey's in the base. And there's only T1 PDs. Oh, this shield gen almost went down to a Zooey that went inside. Now it's dropped its shield and the P gen is being reclaimed, so at least it won't explode, but it will die. Shield gen also may go down. Oh, the P gen was started again and it got shot immediately. Zooey's do a lot of damage there. Air is one for. Where? Wait, where are all the bombers? Oh, here they are. Okay. They're still alive. And SP just spamming. Look at the spam of, of Inties. There's so many. It's, you can follow it all the way back to the base. Oh, now they're way up too high in the sky because of the terrain. Navy looking very firmly in Esperanto's control. That's a nice drop, but if it do, if they don't move immediately, the Zooey's will, will kill them. In a couple of volleys. Here come the bombers. 23 bombers. Hey, anyone know about 23 plus 1? Does anyone know about 23 plus 1? <laughs> Static flak is built now. The shield holds up against the the power of the T1 bomber for now and and still uh, it, it still holds up is that a drug no it's not it's not it's uh, it's a thing in Brazil you should look it up it just <laughs> it just can't came, came back into my head when I saw 23 bombers for some reason. Um, yeah, the static flak is fantastic. It's super good against Inti's. Like, look at that. Inti's just crashing out of the sky. But, uh, yeah, Esperanto, how many frigates? 35 frigates. He has frigates everywhere on the map. Three frigates only for auto. Looks very bad now. A T2 drop into this expansion with uh, Zooey's and one Tham. 
This expansion's not gonna last. Oh god. Yep. There they go. The mexes. The hydro. More of the mexes. Ah, well, Louise. I think you are Brazilian, aren't you? So I guess you. You would know, but yes. <laughs> yep. That's what it is. Exactly. Very hard to find a footballer in Brazil with the number 24 on this jersey. Very difficult. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, very solid win from SP. And at the end, I mean, even at the end, it's like uh, five, only 5k more mass, but but an absolutely crushing position. Which is quite interesting. Brazil. <laughs> yeah, well, associated... Well, associated with... That in... In Brazil, not here. So, anyway, that's it. Uh, yeah, Auto Noob did play... He did play quite well. I agree. I agree. What's up, Noah? Yep, we are. We are done here. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> Got a 7 1 in Rocket League against the team in 2v2. They're so toxic. <laughs> Oh, yeah, seven one. That was quite the sporting event. That seven one, never, never will forget that. Now we're we're done with the stream. I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hit like on your way out and. Uh, We'll see you next time. Have a good one.